all of the footage that I just saw were filmed with this, the Sony Xperia 1 Mark V. And I filmed all of the shots either handheld or by using this, the carbon fiber travel tripod from Small Rig. Even though this video was filmed using the Xperia 1 Mark V, it doesn't really matter what smartphone you have because these tips will help you make better videos. Now real quick, let's talk about the camera settings. When filming with the Xperia 1 Mark V, I like to use the Video Pro app because it allows me to control all of the settings manually, but it doesn't feel too confusing or daunting, even if you're a beginner. For most of my shots, I like to film in 4K, 25 frames per second, but for certain shots, I like to film in 4K, 60 frames per second, because that allows me to slow down the footage which will help hide the micro jitters, but it will also give you that nice dreamy look. Another really cool thing about the Xperia 1 Mark V is that they've added a Cinetone picture profile, which for those of you who don't know, is a picture profile from some of the high-end cinema cameras from Sony. And that picture profile requires very little color grading while still looking very cinematic. My first tip is to add depth to your shot. The opening shot was a slider shot where the camera moved from left to right and I used these tree branches and leaves as foreground, slowly revealing the sign over here. For this shot, I used the focal length of 85 millimeters and in order to get a smooth movement from left to right, it's very important to do most of the camera movement by moving your body instead of using your hands to do the movement. By having the leaves and the branches on the foreground, it will accentuate the camera movement. Also, sometimes simple is the most beautiful. So for this shot, I wanted a static shot of me and my wife and my daughter just walking forwards on this grass with the 85 millimeter lens. I tried my best to have all three of us in the center of the frame for two reasons. First of all, it looks visually pleasing and it accentuates the importance of the characters for the story. Also, it's a good idea to film the environment to give some context of the place. Using a push-in or a dolly-in shot is a great way to add camera movement to your video. And what I also did was I used these trees over here to add a bit of depth to the shot by having them on the foreground. Usually for these kind of wide push-in shots, I would recommend using a wider lens like the 16 millimeter lens. But for this particular shot, I deliberately used the 24 millimeter lens because it has a better image quality. To get a steady dolly in shot, remember to do the heel to toe ninja walk. Film in 60 frames per second because that way you can slow down the footage and hide some of the micro shakes that might occur when you're filming the shot. For the shot where I was lifting my daughter in the air, I wanted to film it in 85 millimeters because that gave a nice compression to the background and it separated us from the background, which made it look more cinematic. The shot of my daughter walking towards the flowers was a complete accident. I mean, I was just recording, following my daughter, and I got this idea that I could just film a close-up, dolly-out shot of the flowers. We couldn't wrap filming on the first day, so we decided to come back the next day. But the problem was that on the first day, it was overcast, but on the second day, the sun was shining very harshly. It was very hard to combine the footage, or, or at least it bothered me. So I had to come up with some kind of an idea how to finish the video, get the rest of the shots, and combine them into a cohesive piece of video. The solution was combining two different shots. One shot from the previous day 
and the second shot from the day we came back. So essentially what I ended up doing was this kind of a masking transition. And we ended the video with this shot of me and my wife having some ice cream. And here's the full sequence one more time. If you enjoyed this video and want to learn more about how to film yourself, then I highly recommend watching this video over here. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next video. Take care.